the tile exterior coating that was liberated when Travis and the folks were deconfiguration, deconfiguring the side hatch. We went ahead and uh, conservatively recommended to go do a slurry repair. Uh, TPS have folks have confirmed the uh, the baseline uh, configuration photos that it is a 207 slurry repair. That's originally that's why Travis was seeing the the contour and the tile. So the repair that we did was actually a conservative repair for the size that it was. Uh, the only thing that we haven't done it's currently in a 30 minute air dry requirement. Uh, the only thing we did not go do was uh, we won't have the capability to go rewaterproof the area, but we talked to ops integration manager, and that's an acceptable MR for him. Our OPO folks are comfortable with the configuration as well, and, uh, and we're recommended to go ahead and continue at this time. And I do have the top folks in case you got any technical questions for them. Okay, and uh, we're going to document on a TPS PR and uh, no constraint? That, that would be my recommendation. Since it's already behind us and all the work's done, we'll let uh, the TPS folks and, uh, go off and document a PR in their world, and we'll, we'll allow them to take care of that without uh, coming forward for a formal IPR, all per 4642 and 11494. Okay, I concur. I don't expect we'll have any, uh, any water issues either. Okay. All right, so no further work required. Uh, what we have done is sufficient. That is correct. We're recommending uh, we're in a go configuration for flight. Copy that. We'll take that. Thank you. You're welcome. No TC of ECC. Go ahead. I'm complete with white room configuration. Final check is complete. I'm ready to leave. All right, you have a go. I'll take care of the elevators on my way down. Listen to you on Direct 7. Thank this you. is shuttle launch control at T minus nine minutes and holding. 33 minutes, 25 seconds remaining in the hold. This is NTD. Go ahead, sir. Uh, let's just ask your constraints list. So I have one constraint shown, and uh, we're going to work on taking that off here shortly. It's the one on our GIC IRD. Copy. Thank you. Yes. Shuttle Launch Director Mike Leinbach talking with NASA Test Director Steve Payne about an issue with that we mentioned earlier that uh, they are going to take off the constraints list that had to do with the a ground power bus that is a non-issue for today. Okay. Everything is go at this point. No technical issues. Was to go ahead and upgrade that to GSC, and it should be in work already. But but we need to ask them where they're at with the upgrade. Copy. PVD OTC air to ground one. Go ahead. Navy step nine fifty six. Copy. And TD CFCP. Calling in TDC again. For the CFCP, we have a LCC violation, no hold required. The ECO 22 and 23 uh, description is supply dump nozzle B was greater than 20 degrees delta from waste dump nozzle Baker. Uh, we do have a pre-planned troubleshooting. We went through it. It was pretty cut and dry. The uh, supply dump nozzle was uh, getting hit by the sun. The waste dump nozzle was in the shade, and that explained the uh, delta temperature. And if you go to camera 64, we have uh, got a good view of it. Okay, I'm on 64. Is it the upper or the lower? And the uh, supply dump nozzle is to the right of the screen on that camera. It was in the uh, sun first. The uh, waste dump nozzle was in the shade. We saw a temperature increase. It uh, exceeded the 20 degree uh, delta for the LCC, and uh, we did have a temporary violation. Okay, so it's a transient violation for what you believe is an explained condition. Yes, it is a explained condition, and the violation is cleared. Be that SPE NTD. NTD SP is with you on 212. Ted, did you copy uh, the uh, problem report we just got? No, Steve, I, I got with you late. Whether it was a violation of ECL 22 or ECL 23, which one? Uh, we actually violated both of them at the same time. They both have the same 20-degree uh, delta. Okay, so so the, the thought is between... Uh, the temperatures on the dump nozzle and the waste nozzle, we shouldn't have more than a 20-degree delta? That is correct, and we were at 20.8. 20.8, but when you guys went back and looked at where we were environmentally 
it can be explained as a temporary and understood excursion because of where we were with the sun angle. That is correct. Uh, we brought up the camera view, and we could see that one was in the shade at the time of the violation. Okay. So does it kind of... This is shuttle launch control at T minus nine minutes and holding. This discussion underway that is regarding an issue that uh, will be dispensed with. No concern for us today. We have 29 minutes and 47 seconds remaining in the hold. Let's see, uh, Shuttle weather officer Kathy Winters briefed uh, launch director Mike Leinbach on the weather here uh, at Kennedy Space Center for launch. All conditions are green at this time. Okay, and uh, do we need to pick up a paper to document, or is it explained you, enough? You know, Steve, it's explained enough. It's a temporary excursion outside of LCC limits, but it's understood. It's well within, you know, my interpretation of implementation of one. And, and ECL launch director, are you back with inspect now? Yes, that is correct. Okay. And uh, we, do, we do have the, you know, for possible temp temperature excursions due to uh, sun shadow, shadow, rain, or environment, mental conditions, we are allowed. So the condition is cleared. SP launch director, I'm good with that one. Okay, Mike, and I, and I am good as well. So you see how I, uh, I concur with your recommendation. No technical concerns with the vehicle. The small excursion that we saw is a uh, temporary and understood condition. That is correct. That entity concurs with that as well. Okay. Thank you, Michelle. This is shuttle launch control at uh, T minus nine minutes in holding, 28 minutes, 20 seconds remaining in our hold. The popularity of space shuttle launches and perhaps the limited number of future launches have no doubt added to the numbers of space fans who have flocked to the central Florida area to witness the last launch of space shuttle Discovery. This video, shot via helicopter just a few hours ago by our Kennedy Space Center television crews, shows the crowds of spectators gathering on the beaches and along the sides of roads and in parks all along the Florida coast today. First area from the Vehicle Assembly Building. And now uh, Kennedy Space Center Visitor Center. The uh, helicopter also then flew over the Titusville Bridge area. There truly is going to be no way to estimate the numbers of people uh, who have come to witness this launch. This is uh, still the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Center area. There are expectations from some that uh, this might rival some of the largest crowds in history. hope that everybody who has come will get to see what they came for, the launch of Discovery at 4.50 p.m. Now looking at the uh, Titusville Bridge area where folks camped out overnight. And we're back at the shuttle on the launch pad. Viewing, hearing, and feeling the launch of the space shuttle in person is truly an experience we wish every American could have. It fills the uh, heart with pride in what the dedicated NASA and contractor teams across the country have accomplished. And we welcome uh, everyone who is in attendance today to watch the launch of Space Shuttle Discovery. Attention on the net, this is the NTD with a T-minus 20-minute briefing. Our launch window today opens at 21, 5, 0, and 2, second, at 2 7 seconds GMT, closes at 21, 5, 3, 2, 7 seconds GMT. Our lock strain back hold time is 1 minute, 59 seconds based on engine performance. Our launch window and lock strain back hold times will be updated and provided to the team during the T-minus 9-minute hold. There are no launch window cutouts or colas for this opportunity. For PLT, at T-minus five minutes, perform APU start upon command of OTC only. PLT, copy. For C-1, 
CDR. The pad egress system is in nominal configuration. The evacuation helipad is eight. CDR copies. For the firing room launch team, after T minus 20 minutes, all problems or trends that require a countdown clock hold will be reported to the NTD on channel 212 together with a recommendation. For all manual holds, after T minus 5 minutes, the countdown clock will continue until T minus 31 seconds unless a recommendation to hold at the next milestone is necessary. After T minus 31 seconds, only cutoff is available and will result in a recycle to T minus 20 minutes. For a cutoff, the pro words CGLS give cutoff will be used. GLS milestones are as listed, and that concludes the T-minus 20-minute brief. NNTD STM. STM. Yeah, step 1065, were you ready for that yet? That's affirmative. Let's kick off 1065. Copy. NTD Houston flight. That's right. IOU 1049, the BFS pre-flight uplink load is complete. Copy 1049. TLT, OTC. TLT, go. Yeah, clear hardware, caution, and warning. Memory, verify no unexpected errors. TLT, and work. Houston flight, NTD. NTD, Houston flight, go ahead. Do we have any updates to the lock train back hold time? We had one minute, five, nine seconds. Negative, 159 is still valid. Copy. OTC, PLT, unexpected errors. Copy, thank you. You can see that's 11.04 through 11.06. This is shuttle launch control during the T minus nine minute hold. Twenty six minutes remaining in the hold. Everything continues to go well. We're working no major technical issues. The weather is green. Our preferred launch time remains twenty seven seconds. After 4.50 p.m. NTD Houston flight, go ahead. Yes, sir. We're going to need the pass or BFS G1 launch target up when we close today. Negative. We will not require those. Not performed on both. Council and Safety Council entity. Pack. NTD, NTD, safety. I'll give you 10, uh, step 1062 to close our coup is at AB11. Copy that. Pack copies. And the closeout crew has safely retreated to the AB11 roadblock, leaving the flight crew aboard Discovery by themselves and ready for launch today. HCD, OTC, head to ground one. HCD? Yeah, step 1139. NTD, safety. 935. That is still Have in you working. Gotten that yet? All right, and you had fill-ins for me on a previous step? On step 932. I'll inquire one more time. Thank you. And I'm ready. All right, the operation number is 80, run number is 1. The log number is LCC3-1024-10-0002. Did you see if you get that? Did you see got it? During the T-minus nine-minute hold, several polls are normally taken to verify that the teams at Kennedy and the Johnson Space Center in Houston are ready to proceed with launch. Yes, sir. Uh, last line item, IPR 109. Just dropped off constraint list. Copy. No further constraints. Further constraints at I-200. Thank you. And as you hear, there are no further constraints. Yes, sir. Our constraints list is clear. Good news. Safety Council entity. 
Safety. I can give you step 935 and looking for 1063. Copy, you have 1063, sir. NASA test director Steve Payne is going to be polling all the engineers in firing room four. Mission management team chairman Mike Moses will be polling members of the MMT. My ST is deactivated. That's firm. And I will give you 1064 to terminate video tracking of the closeout crew. Copy that. In Mission Control Houston, flight director Richard Jones will poll his team of ascent flight controllers. Step 1067, the KSC area is cleared for launch. Copy. Everyone in the Launch Control Center and aboard Discovery is on the same communications channel from now through launch. We have 22 minutes remaining in our hold. This is GIS, go ahead. You got any updates to your ground camera system? Our ground cameras are ready to support. If you're ready for the fillings, I'm ready to give them to you. Okay, for step 1095, standing by for fillings. Okay, long range north is eight. Long range south is eight. Medium range north is six. Medium range south is six. Medium range west is six. And short range is six. Copy all. Looks like we got good capability. Yes, sir. And then TDS MQC. That's MQC. What was the number for long range south? Long range south was eight. Copy. FCP OTC at ground one. FCP. You can verify eleven sixteen. Verified. Thank you. Launch director. Our ground camera systems verified, ready to support launch. Okay, cover that. Thanks, Steve. All systems are go. 20 minutes, 47 seconds remaining in our hold at T minus 9 minutes. Space Shuttle Discovery set to embark on its 39th and final mission at 4.50 p.m. STS-133 is an 11-day mission to the International Space Station and will add the permanent multipurpose module, which is a storage module, and it will also add science capabilities and deliver some needed supplies to the six-member crew. NTD Houston flight, go ahead. As for step 1115, the ascent data crew update, will you be needing that today? Negative, that is not required. Up and not performed.
This is Shuttle Launch Control with 18 minutes remaining in our T-minus 9-minute hold. And as Space Shuttle Discovery is preparing for launch, the International Space Station is traveling about 220 miles above the Earth on a 51.6 degree inclination to the equator. The exact shuttle launch time of 4.50 and 27 seconds is based on the time that the Earth's rotation is carrying Kennedy Space Center's launch pad into the plane of the space station's orbit. And at the time of liftoff, the station, moving at 17,500 miles per hour, or five miles a second, will be out over the South Pacific Ocean. Six Expedition 26 crew members aboard the space station are awaiting Discovery's arrival two days from now. The launch control team working no technical issues and weather is green. Everything is go for today's launch of Space Shuttle Discovery. NTD, this is SRO on 212. Right, SRO. SRO, NTD, go ahead. SRO. You go. Brain status is no go at this time. Uh, Central Command remoting system is partially operational. When selecting a screen, the string will go down. And um, they experienced this event the other last night. I had confidence in the system as long as they didn't select, select that screen that we were confident in the system. However, the same event was experienced when selecting a different screen. Uh, they are not confident in the system at this time, and range test is no-go. Okay, what's your estimated time to repair? Uh, we do not know right now. Um, they're having an anomaly discussion, but right now um, we only have a couple of minutes uh, to be able to give you um, our poll, and I, we're thinking at this time we're not going to be able to support C0. Okay, keep us informed. I will. NTD launch director. Go ahead, sir. Okay, guys, let's calm down. They're working a little issue over there. We'll give them a few minutes to work it. And if they get green, we'll be in good shape. And, and in order to support that NTD, I'd like you to do your poll on time. And I will as well. And, and we'll be ready to go when range clears up. Copy that. We'll be ready. Thank you. This is Shuttle Launch Control at T-minus 14 minutes, 10 seconds and counting. And as you heard, the range safety officer reports that the range is red and no-go at this point due to a problem with their central command computer. Launch Director Mike Leinbach directing his team to uh, stand, stand by. We'll take the poll, we'll give them an opportunity to work the issue, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to make our launch time of 4.50 and 27 seconds. There are no other technical issues at this point, and weather remains go.
OTC CHPD. Go ahead. I can give you step 1139. Confidence checks are complete. Copy 1139. And NTDSB. NTDSB. Hey, Steve, do you know if we got enough information from the range guys to say whether the thought is they are in violation of uh, something in ETR01, hardware-wise? That lets me go yeah, to get up SP to launch director, they're working it over on their side with their uh, launch decision authority. They know what the issue is. They're trying to get comfortable if their system is mission capable or not, and they're, we're working through those discussions right now. So. I have to give them a few minutes. Okay, and, and Mike, the only question was, is it something explicitly writ written in ETR-01 that they're currently in violation of, or, or is it another part of their system that they were, were off taking a look at? I just I just never heard enough of a description. Yeah, I didn't get enough of a description either. Be okay, with it. all right. This is Shuttle Launch Control with 11 minutes, 20 seconds remaining in our hold at T-minus 9. The uh, polls will be conducted in a few moments. At this time, uh, we do know that the range safety officer, range is no go. While they continue to work uh, an issue that they notified uh, Shuttle Launch Director Mike Leinbach and NASA Test Director Steve Payne of moments ago, having to do with uh, their computer screens, and they do need to have the ability to carefully monitor launch and ascent. They're an integral part of the uh, safe flying of the space shuttle launch. So we'll stand by and uh, await further word from the range. Entity launch director. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, with this particular type of issue from the range, uh, there are no issues with the vehicle. Um, weather is perfect. I'd be inclined to uh, take this issue down to five minutes if you would concur. I would agree, sir. Okay. And uh, Houston flight? Launch Director Houston Flight, go ahead. Yeah, we're considering taking this issue down to five minutes. I assume you don't have a problem with that. Zero problem with that. I think that's the right decision. Copy. Shuttle Launch Director Mike Leinbach discussing with uh, Houston Flight Director Richard Jones. The go ahead on 118. A plan to come out of our hold on time and count down to T minus five minutes, allowing some extra time for the range to work the issue that they are in the process of working. And hopefully, this added time will uh, give them the opportunity to clear it before we uh, would have to stop the countdown at T minus five minutes. Nine minutes and 15 seconds remaining in our hold at T-minus nine minutes. This is Shuttle Launch Control. Discovery Launch Director, head of ground one. Go for Discovery. Okay, Steve, I don't know how much you've been following this, but uh, the range is having a little bit of an issue with their with their range safety uh, command uh, system, the display of their command system, and they're talking it actively over there. Um, hopeful that we'll get through it. Not quite sure if we will yet or not, but uh, the right people are working on it. So we're going to take this one on down to the wire. We'll go through our polls here and uh, take it on down to five minutes and, and see if we can't get you a good flight today. Sounds like a great plan, Mike. Copy. Standing by. As you heard, Shuttle Launch Director Mike Leinbach briefing Discovery Commander Steve Lindsay on the uh, issue at hand and uh,
getting his concurrence that we will count down to T-minus five minutes while we allow the uh, Eastern Range Range Safety Officer to uh, work the issue that they are working with their Central Command System computer display. Seven minutes and 13 seconds remaining in our hold at T-minus nine minutes. CISL, JRPS, and Houston Flight perform the L-15 recorder activation. ISL? ISL copies in work. RPS? RPS. And Flight. We will put that in work. Thank you. MS-1 and MS-4 OTC on air to ground 1, activate the V-10 recorder. MS-1 in work. MS-4 in work. This is shuttle launch control, five minutes remaining in our hold at T-minus nine minutes. This is the NTD conducting the launch status check. All stations verify ready to resume count and go for launch. OTC, OTC go. TBC, TBC go. ETC, ETC's go. LPS, LPS is go. Houston flight. Houston flight is go. Mila. Mila's go. STM. STM is go. Safety console. Safety console's go. STE. SP is go. LRD. LRD is go. SRO. SRO is go, go. Copy, are you go to go to five minutes and hold? Yes, we are good to go five minutes and hold. Copy. And CDR. Discovery is go. Launch director NTD. Yes, sir. Our launch team is ready to proceed. SRO has a concurrence to go to five minutes. Okay, copy all that. I'll do my poll this time. KC, Chief Processing Engineer, verify no constraints to launch. No constraints. Thank you, Steve. KC, Safety and Mission Assurance. KC, Safety and Mission Assurance is go pending resolution of the range issue. Copy. Payload Launch Manager. Bike to Space Station Processing Team to go. Copy. Range Weather. Weather has no constraints for launch. Copy. Thank you, Kathy. And Ops Manager. Actually, Mike, on our side, uh, MMT's in really good shape. The vehicle's looking perfect. Weather's looking great. We'll stand by here and see if the range can resolve their issue, but we are go. Okay, copy that, and uh, we'll take it on down to five and see if we can't get there. Yeah, it's a good plan, Mike. Let's keep going. And KC Safety Mission Assurance? KC Safety and Mission Assurance. Let's see, if we get uh, the go from SRO, you're going to be go. Is that a firm? We yeah, don't have to re-pull you. Mike. Yes, we are go. Right, so we will not re-pull you if we get a go from SRO. That's affirmative. Thank you, sir. Concur. SRO? We're looking at uh, Shuttle Launch Director Mike Leinbach, Assistant Launch Director Charlie Blackwell-Thompson to his side, and Stephanie Stilson, Discovery Flow Director. CTLS 
CTLS, NTD. CTLS. Okay, we're going to pick up the count here shortly. Once we start counting, I need you to insert a hold at five. CTLS copies will insert a hold at five minutes. That's the test director, Steve Payne, uh, reminding the ground launch sequencer team to insert a hold at T-minus five minutes. We will be coming out of our hold at nine minutes and counting down to five to enable the range safety officer and the uh, range team uh, a few more minutes to work their problem. They currently are no-go. Two minutes remaining in our hold at T-minus nine minutes. Again, our only issue is a red condition from the Eastern Range. Their central command system display is not operating properly and it needs to be for them to give a go for launch. One minute, 30 seconds remaining in our hold. NTD ISL. Go ahead. Recorder activation complete. Copy. 55 seconds remaining in the hold. Once again, we will come out of the hold at T minus 9 minutes. We will count down to T minus 5 minutes. Between uh, now and then, if the range safety system condition is uh, corrected, we will continue to count down for launch. If not, we will hold at five minutes. Twenty-five seconds remaining in our T-minus nine-minute hold. Just a few seconds away from resuming our countdown. Captain Clark will resume on my mark. NTD safety. Three, step by safety. Two, one, mark. T minus nine minutes and counting. TLS out of sequence has been initiated. And the ground launch sequencer has been initiated. All countdown functions now automatically controlled by the GLS computer located in the firing room integration console. Thank you. Our window will expire. About five minutes after our preferred launch time. T minus eight minutes, 17 seconds and counting. All systems are go, except for. Uh, buses to fuel cells per your checklist. PLT in work. except for the uh, range safety officer. We stand by as they continue to work through their problem. OTC PLT, essential buses connected to fuel cell. Pilot Eric Bow flips switches in the uh, cockpit to connect the three fuel cells directly to the essential power buses. T minus seven minutes, 30 seconds and counting. TLS is go for orbiter excess arm retract. And Discovery OTC from the processing team of Discovery to the crew of Discovery, enjoy the ride. Thank you very much. Thanks for all the work you did getting this uh, ready to go and uh, appreciate all, all your work. And for those watching, get ready to witness the majesty and the power of Discovery as she lifts off one final time. Orbiter access arm retracting. Orbiter test conductor John Craxon talking with Space Shuttle Commander Steve Lindsay. And NTD CTLS. We've inserted a hold and the clock will hold at T minus five minutes. Copy, thank you. T minus six minutes, 50 seconds. Planning to hold at T minus five minutes unless the range is clear. Sure. Can you give us an update on your uh, repair? No change that, sir. Copy, no change.
JRPS OTC start APU display recorders. Can work. PLT OTC or o PLT OTC perform APU pre start. PLT is work. RTC JRPS display recorders are running. T minus six minutes, four seconds and counting. Orbiter test conductor John Craxon gave pilot Eric Bowe the go to perform the auxiliary power unit pre-start procedure. The APUs provide pressure to the shuttle's three hydraulic systems that move the main engine nozzles and aero surfaces. T-minus five minutes, 40 seconds and counting. T-minus five minutes, 30 seconds and counting. T-minus five minutes, four seconds and counting. Countdown clock is holding at T-minus five minutes due to manual request. Countdown clock is holding here. Five here, well, we'll troubleshoot our uh, Eastern Range Central Command reporting system issue. Two minutes and 48 seconds of hold time remain in today's launch window of Space Shuttle Discovery. Today's launch window expires in 2 minutes, 28 seconds. And into the CTLS, we did indicate, get an indication that the range safety uh, did throw their hold switch. That's affirmative. All systems are go with the exception of the eastern range. And they continue to troubleshoot a problem with their central command system display. Two minutes remaining in the hold today. Two minutes remaining in our launch window. Hello, NTD, final recommendation, please. Stand by one. NASA Test Director Steve Payne checking with the Eastern Range on their status to pick up the count. We have one minute, 30 seconds remaining in our window today. Forty seconds remaining in our launch window. Range is go. GLS has the SRO hold been removed. Negative, sir. SRO NTD. NT NTD. I can remove the hold here. It can be SRO on two and two. So needed to put your hold switch in proceed position. Hold fire on proceed. PC GLS, can you verify? GLS verified. Fifteen okay. seconds remaining in our hold. T-minus five minutes and counting. TLT, OTC, perform APU start. TLT in work. And CDI, OTC, reconfigure heaters. Copy in work. T-minus four minutes, 41 seconds and counting. All systems are go and weather is green. Flight entity. 
MTD Houston flight, I have two seconds of drain back hold remaining. Two, two seconds. seconds. OTC PLP, three good APUs. Copy that. Pilot Eric Bowe reporting three good auxiliary power units. T-minus four minutes and counting. US is good for put four. The final helium purge of the three main engines is underway in preparation for main engine start. Go for Captain Eric, I'm Jim Teaser. Ring status is go for launch. And what is your status? We are go. Copy. Final test of the flight control surfaces is underway. This is a pre-programmed pattern of movements designed to verify the readiness of the flight control surfaces, the elevons, speed brakes, and rudder. Minus 30 minutes and 30 seconds and counting. Final aero surface checks are complete. Discovery's three main engines will be gimbaled through a pre-programmed -pro series of maneuvers as a final test before launch. T minus three minutes and counting. Final pressurization of the external tank's liquid oxygen tank is underway. And we're completing purge of the shuttle main engines. TLT OTC, clear caution and warning memory, verify no unexpected errors. TLT in work. Non the gaseous oxygen vent hood, or beanie cap, is slowly being retracted away from the top of the external tank. Close and lock your visors and initiate O2 flow. Cap and work. Orbiter test conductor John Craxon requesting pilot Eric Bow clear the caution and warning memory system. T minus two minutes and counting. Liquid hydrogen replenish on the external tank is being terminated as planned. T minus one minute, 30 seconds and counting. All systems are go about 90 seconds away from the launch of Space Shuttle Discovery on her final mission. T-minus one minute, 10 seconds and counting. The liquid hydrogen tank inside the external tank is now at the proper flight pressure. T-minus one minute and counting. The ground launch sequencer will verify that the three main engines are ready to start. The booster joint heaters are being deactivated at this time. T minus 48 seconds and we're transferring to orbiter internal power. Discovery is now running on its uh, three onboard fuel cells. Coming up on a go for auto sequence start at T minus 31 seconds. And we have a go for auto sequence start. Discovery's onboard computers have primary control of all the vehicle's critical functions. 20 seconds. The sound suppression water system has been activated, protecting Discovery and the launch pad from acoustical energy waves. Go for main engine start. We have main engine start. Two, one, booster ignition and the final liftoff of Discovery, a tribute to the dedication, hard work, and pride of America's space shuttle team. The shuttle has cleared the tower. Space shuttle now rolling over onto its back for the eight and a half minute ride into orbit. Discovery now making one last reach for the stars.
now throttling down as the orbiter passes through the area of maximum pressure, reducing the stress on the shuttle as it goes supersonic. Discovery Houston, you are go at throttle up. Will Commander Steve Lindsay acknowledging the call from Capcom and Charlie Hobai as Discovery's three main engines throttle back up. Lindsay is joined on the flight deck by pilot Eric Bowen, mission specialist Al Drew, and Nicole Stott. Mission specialist Mike Barrett and Steve Bowen. Discovery's three main engines are burning fuel at a rate that would drain an average swimming pool in about 25 seconds. The engines combined with the solid rocket boosters produce more than 7 million pounds of thrust. One minute, 50 seconds into the flight, we're standing by for separation of the twin solid rocket boosters. Discovery now traveling 2,695 miles an hour. It's altitude 24 miles, downrange from the Kennedy Space Center 29 miles. the flight discovery traveling 3,189 miles an hour, its altitude 37 miles, downrange from the Kennedy Space Center 53. Discovery now getting a boost into orbit from its twin orbital maneuvering system engines on either side of the shuttle's tail. These two engines will burn for two minutes and 32 seconds. Discovery, you are two engine tau. Uh, we do have updates to your NOCOM mode bound. The uh, contingency aboard boundaries will use our in-plane pl plus two. Copy the new Presta ATO and Presta. Me. Okay, copy all. Two engine tail and ready to copy. Eleven decimal nine. Presta Miko. One decimal four. Eleven decimal. Nine and one five decimal four. That's a good read back on both. Discovery can now make it to emergency landing sites. Engines fail, but all three engines continue to perform as expected. Capcom Charlie Hobah updating the crew there with some uh, updated uh, time information due to the later than planned launch. Three minutes and 50 seconds into the flight, the shuttle traveling 4,700 miles an hour. Discovery, you are negative return. Too high and too fast to return to the Kennedy. But all three main engines continue to traveling 5,200 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, 170 miles. Four minutes, 45 seconds into the flight, Discovery traveling an hour, it's altitude 66 miles, downrange from KSC 229 miles. Here inside Mission Control, Flight Director Richard Jones and his team continue to monitor the progress of Discovery's flight. All systems are continuing to perform as expected. I'm Charlie Hobai, indicating that Discovery can make it to a lower engine fail at this point. However, all three engines as expected. Discovery, you are single engine ops three. Single engine ops three.
Discovery's engines are now swiveling to roll the shuttle to a heads-up position to get better communication with NASA's tracking satellites. Discovery, your single-engine Zaragoza 104. Single-engine Zaragoza 104. Discovery can now make it to emergency landing sites in Europe should two engines fail at this point, but the flight continues to go well. Six minutes, 24 seconds into the flight, the shuttle traveling 9,800 miles an hour is seven miles down. For the pitch. Press D'Amico, nominal. Pitch. Good read back. They call for indicating that Commander Steve Lindsay has a go to press to main engine cutoff as expected in about a minute and a half. Discovery, you are single engine press. Single engine press. Seven minutes, 15 seconds into Discovery's flight. The shuttle traveling 12,700 miles an hour. Its altitude 66 miles. The Kennedy Space Center. Miles. Discovery's engines now throttling this on the crew and the shuttle to three times that of gravity. Shuttle traveling 14,000 miles an hour. Three seconds to go in Discovery's power. Space Shuttle Discovery. External tank separation confirmed. Commander Steve Lindsay will steer the shuttle up to the uh, forward so that the umbilical 